Welcome back to Pedal Box. This time you're going to join us as we weld in a bit more sheet metal on the car. We're going to move the bodywork even further forward as we keep trying to do. And we're also going to put some needlessly huge steel box section over our handbrake to protect the brake lines. Well, the days are short at the minute, so we don't have much time, so I'm going to get straight into it. Clamped up on the bottom here, we've got one of these triangle pieces, and that just sits underneath and forms the bottom half of this whole structure. And we've got a much bigger piece that I'm going to tack onto the side in a minute. We've got the bottom one on first because it's always easier to weld in the top of things rather than up underneath is kind of a pain. So I'm going to get some tacks in on this, and uh, I think I'm going to then hand you back to Aid. <laughs> So while Chris is welding those panels on, I'm going to go through some of the plans for our handbrake cover using these two massive pieces of steel. And you might be wondering why on earth we're using some 3mm box section in order to build this. Well, I think this one's a 2.5mm, but by and large this is way, way overkill for really what it needs to be. We were going to 3D print it, but that means if we're climbing out, we put our hand on it and lift ourselves, we might just shatter the whole thing apart. And that's not ideal because under that is the brake pipes. If we pinch one of those, the rear brakes stop working. So that's definitely not what we want to avoid. Plus, if we've got tools or anything behind the seats, we want to lift them forward. If we drop it, we'll just shatter it. Same problem. So it's going to be made out of steel. And why are we using this steel? Because this is what we have in stock. Fortunately, though, we have a couple of very weird pieces. We have this one, which has already had a big section cut out of it, but is still the right length and is almost the right height at 100 by 100 because we need a minimum 80 mil clearance in the middle and we need to clear 120 mil across the uh, top so that we can clear the bend on the top pipe. This is some inch, uh, two inch by two inch box that I'd sectioned in half. So we've welded this back together and this becomes a perfect extension that sits on the top. So now all we need to do is cut a slot out the bottom, which you can see I've already marked. This will slide down into the back. With this piece on top, this is going to get welded on, and then we'll seal up the back, the front, and we can just bolt this down into the car. And this won't go anywhere. You'll be able to stand on this. You'll be able to jump up and down on this, and we're not going to crush those pipes. I'm not going to test that, though. Fast forward a couple hours because we ran out of welding wire which held us up a little bit but the bottom pieces on both sides are now in which means I get to move on to the much bigger, much more warping prone side pieces that are going to go on here and here on the two sides of the car. Now I've got a horrible feeling these are going to come out kind of wobbly because uh, that tends to happen when we weld in any big flat sheet but uh, I'll do my best to try and not make that happen. Well, it's January, so it got dark pretty suddenly. It hasn't actually been all that long since the last clip I recorded, but both the side panels are on now. We've fully seen welded in all around, which is why they've gone really wobbly and wavy. If I point the torch across it, you can see the uh, light playing off it there. It's pretty much what I expected to happen. So we've got to work out, do we want to bang them out or in to you know, try and get it all pointing one way. The other side we've punted out, this is convex. Um, it looks a bit like a pillow though, so we're probably gonna punch both of them in, probably look a bit sharper. Now it's only five o'clock and as much as we've run out of light here, we've got plenty of time left. So we're going to cover this up, head back inside and finish off that handbrake cover that Aid was working on earlier. So as you saw before, these are the pieces of our handbrake cover. This top piece made of the two inch box section welded together. And I've now cut out almost all of the parts from this 100 by 100 box. So this is going to just drop down. We'll have two little slots in there that this can just slide 
in around the pipes. This will obviously sit on top and go over and we'll have a plate down the front which we've cut but we're not going to weld on just yet. We're going to make sure it fits in the car and because it's dark now we can't do anything on the car. So there's a back plate to go on as well but we're going to leave that until the very end in case we need to cut this back just in case we've made any mistakes, give ourselves as much room as possible to work with. And then we can trim this down to the size it actually needs to be once we've got these bits on and tested. Well, this is all cool after we welded it up last night. We've ground it all down so it's nice and smooth and this fits really nicely over the handbrake on the car. Now we've also made this little front plate which fits around the handbrake uh, mount and this fits really really nicely on there so we can go ahead and just weld this straight onto the front of the box like that and that will close in the very front. We also need to drill two holes or cut two slots. We still need to work out which way we're going to go with it there for the very front and then we need to work out the back. Now we don't actually need it as long as this, we definitely confirmed that on the car uh, with a couple of photographs so we can see exactly how much we can cut off. So it's just whether or not we take it from this um, filler piece all the way down to the bottom in a straight line or whether or not we have a little step on the back. And I haven't fully decided which one I want to do yet. Now while we wait for that to cool down, because it is extremely hot after being welded, we're going to install our exhaust. Now we've only been teasing you with this for about two years, and this is the one that our patrons bought nearly two years ago. All of the components, and we finally had it um, properly welded up. So it's really, really nice, back purged everything so this is going to be absolutely glorious to get on because this completely finishes up the whole of our exhaust system from the turbo right to the back tips and it just drops in like that three nuts on this end hold it onto the turbo and two on this end hold it onto the back box and that's it installed now we can put the heat shield back on and we're good to go and that's it the whole system is complete. We can put the boost pipes on, and that's actually the entire air breathing side from here, all the way to here, completed. And here's the finished product. Comically overbuilt though it is, we expect this to survive any toolboxes that we hurl into the back of this behind our seats, carelessly aid leaning on it, people standing on it at events because no one ever pays attention to the no step signs, all that sort of thing. Probably too strong even for that, but as I mentioned, the metal we've got, is kind of the best metal to make anything out of, especially with how difficult it is to get hold of anything these days. So we've got two slots in the front that we're going to drop down over here. We're going to drill a couple of holes, put some rivet nuts in, and that's going to secure the front of it. And we're going to do this much the same on the back, where we have this little flange to hold the back of it down. That should hold it completely in place. We'll have a little bit of rubber matting in between just to make it a bit less boomy. So we're going to start drilling some holes, get the rivet nuts in, get this secured in place. Well, the side pods are starting to take shape a bit more and I'm a little bit concerned because right now it seems like this is the body line of the car tapering in and this is sticking out. And what we want is for this to be the body line of the car not tapering in and for it to look like this is just a duct going into the car. So we want kind of this to be the primary shape. Now to make that happen, we want to start closing in the top of our body line, much the same as we did over the rear arch. And as soon as we do that, we're going to lose access to put in our front wheel arch liners. So before we can get on with any more of this skin and all the nice pretty bodywork, we're going to start putting in a few more supports and get our wheel arch liner in. Now the first piece, simple little piece of steel that's just going to join across here, and it's coplanar with the lower support that runs down here into the bottom of the chassis. So this is what, the, what goes down to our trailing arm mount. So we've got one nice big plane, should be nice and easy to cut a big sheet of aluminium that fills that in. And once we've got that in place, we can kind of start building in a bit more of the skin because we know that we've got all the substrate in here to support our wheel arch liner for the future. We've beaten both of these sides in and they're looking much, much better. I'm really pleased we've got these on 
in this episode and over this weekend. Yep, and as the Sunday draws to a close with the lights yes. uh, fading away pretty quick here, we're pretty happy. We've got the uh, bracework in to support the inner wheel latch. That's not going in this weekend. That might not even go in next weekend, but at least we're ready now, yeah. which means we can get back to some of the slightly more fun and interesting stuff of the bodywork ready for the next episode. And of course, we managed to get the handbrake cover done, which I've conveniently left on the picnic table just over there. Please hold. So while Chris has been welding in those pieces, I've been painting this up and getting the lacquer on it, and I'm really, really pleased with how it's come out. So I'll let you have a quick look over that as well. Good and solid, as we hoped, and uh, yeah, not looking too bad. You've hidden my manky welds quite well, I think. Yeah, it's still a little <laughs> bit overkill, but I think we'll deal with it. And we finally got that exhaust on after two years of teasing, so uh, I think that's, we, can, we can finally count that as a win. Yeah. Uh, you can support us at shop.pedalbox.show, where you can buy hats like these, and if you want to support us a little bit more directly, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow, and you can join us there from as little as a dollar a month. And we have added a couple of new tiers, redone things, so they all have interesting names now. Now, so our dollar tier is the inanimate carbon rod. And if you haven't already, remember to like the video, share it on with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and let us know what you think of the project in the comments, because uh, God bless the algorithm. All hail the algorithm.